Hi folks, it's good to be with you. Love to everybody out there. This is Jay Ball. And uh, I'm just showing you I'm just showing you my uh, favorite walk. This is a walk that sometimes I do. And uh, I'm just going to go on this walk. And I uh, hope you enjoy the walk with me. I love this walk and uh, not many people know about this walk and uh, I just love it these uh, these guys there <laughs> they really really uh, come after you if you put some bread out I didn't bring any bread I love this place I absolutely love it I absolutely love it. So what we're going to talk about? <clears throat> well, I'm just going to go on my walk and show you my walk, and uh, just talk about anything really, anything that comes to mind. And I just pray, Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your love and grace. And I uh, just pray everything I share on this video will be edifying and a blessing to people. I ask this Father in your name and for your glory. Amen. So here we are. We're coming into this part here. So that's uh, a bit of a river there. Hey, guess what, folks? I haven't got my... Uh, I've got boots on this time. Nice shoes. Not them uh, silly... Uh, Flip-ons that I got too big at six at, that I thought were sixes, but were actually nines. So this is a it's a gorgeous walk. So I'll talk about uh, whatever comes into my head. Don't forget to pray for me for Ghana. Yes, I am going to Ghana pretty soon so please pray uh, I need your prayers and uh, please pray for me one minute a day so there's a big big uh, so Talk about what's been happening in the news. Well, with Brexit, I wish they'd get on. I think uh, it's a disgrace to democracy. I think they should have got on with it ages ago. I think Europe doesn't want us to have a good deal to teach as an example. But at the end of the day, whatever they do, I think it's really bad for democracy. And uh, I'm not just saying it, but there probably be revolutions coming in the next few years because of this absolute crazy nonsense that they've done they need to have sorted it out and they've not been fair to all the people that voted to leave so it's been a disgrace On the issue of Tommy Robinson and the British Army, I think it's a disgrace what they did to those young kids just because they had a photograph with him. But it shows you that we're heading for a, a, a clash between those who are sick and tired of political correctness and Islamification and those who are holding the line about political correctness. There's going to come a clash one day and uh, I'm fed up with political correctness to be honest I'm absolutely sick to death of it to be honest 
the sooner it's pushed out of the way the better to, to be honest some uh, swans on there I love this place, it's really relaxing uh, What else is there? Oh, trip to Hyde Park On the issue of the Trinity, the Muslims keep bashing the Trinity every week Number one The Quran states that Christians believe in three gods so the Quran's not the word of God because that's not what Christians believe. Christians believe in one God. Three persons in one Godhead. So the Quran can't be the word of God. Go to um, answering Islam and look at Islam and the Trinity and find out that the Quran gets it wrong about the Christian position. So the Quran can't be the word of God. Uh, because it's got it wrong on what we believe secondly people like Hashim, Mansur, Muhammad Hijab they're always taking verses out of context they never look at all the verses on what the Bible teaches and it's clear for example uh, Philippians chapter 2 where it talks about he thought it not robbery to be equal with God um, clear declaration that Jesus is God there and the early church if you look at Justin Martyr it's a clear declaration there that there was a belief in the Trinity so this idea the Trinity was invented this idea that the Trinity is not in the Bible it's just nonsense just taking cherry-picking text that they want in order to buttress their position you know This is a great place. Great place. So I'm just going to sit down here a minute. Yeah, and uh, then there's the issue of the canon, how the canon formed, and I debated uh, one or two people on that issue. And uh, first of all, it was very, very difficult. Sorry about this. Yeah. You know, it was very, very difficult debating on that topic at Hyde Park because people kept butting in, and and uh, I just found it very, very difficult, really. Um, but on the issue of the canon, the formation of the canon. Um, on the issue of the formation of the canon oops on the on the issue of the formation of the canon um, first of all you've got to look at it theologically what the bible teaches and if you if you read the westminster confession it quotes the bible verses for you but it talks about um, it talks about in the Westminster Confession that the Word of God testifies to itself. I said this about three times in the discussion with Mansur and Abbas, but it didn't quite 
sink in the significance of that. What that means is, if the Word of God testifies to itself, uh, if you remember, um, the Bible teaches that the, the Holy Spirit will will uh, speak to you, you know, through the Word of God, and um, the the Spirit of God will testify to the Word of God, and the Spirit and the Word go together. So what that means is, is that it's no council, no church council, no bishop, no individual person gets to say this is the word of God or not. It's God that gets to say what his word is. And so that's a very important principle. So when we look at church history, um, we're looking for people that are full of the Spirit of God and want to follow the Word of God that they will receive the Word by the Holy Spirit and so what? And so that's what we find in the early church we find, oh the second thing is is that in the Westminster Confession the, it teaches about um, the Word of God is preserved by God so God protects his word and these are two fundamental teachings that if you hold on to will help you to get through this issue of the canon the canon of scripture you know um, so when you look at the early church within the first 200 years there was a clear understanding of about 24 of the books of the New Testament so for example, Ignatius, Polycarp, and Irenaeus, these were some of the earliest church fathers, quote 24 of the books. Uh, if you want information on this, you can go on uh, Cold Case Christianity uh, by Wallace, and he has articles on this that you can go and look at. They're very helpful. So right at the beginning, there was no one council that said, this is the word, they were already at, um, by Irenaeus, Polycarp and Ignatius there was already an awareness of what the Word of God was all of Paul's epistles were accepted uh, the Gospels were accepted there was just a few epistles uh, 2 Peter and 2 John uh, 3 John and um, later on Hebrews and later on Revelation where there was discussions about and they were eventually accepted those other ones uh, because the church the, the leaders had to acknowledge that they were being blessed in the church and the church saw them as the word of God and that's basically the New Testament canon in a nutshell argued for you now there were one or two books like uh, the Epistle of Barnabas uh, the Dedicate, Shepherd of Hermes, that sometimes was seen as the Word of God. But that, that was not by all of the church, it was only in isolated pockets. And that, the reason for that is, is because if you, if you remember that we're, we have the internet, we have all this communication, but the ancient world didn't have all that technological advancement. So information did not spread as fast and false information uh, did not you, what, what I'm trying to say is that information about what books were in the Word of God did not spread fastly it took time that's why for example uh, Origen when he came to um, I think it was to Jerusalem or to, to the surrounding area that some of the ideas that he had he, he had to readjust them because he learnt the Christians were seeing things in a different way than he was and um, my ideas that I'm saying uh, as scholarly credence with uh, Bruce Metzer uh, Bruce Metzer says exactly what I'm saying concerning the general acceptance of most of the epistles and then the general debate about a few of the epistles 
and he also acknowledges some of the books like the Shepherd of Hermes the Epistle of Barnabas was seen by some as the Word of God so he acknowledges that as well so I'm giving some scholarly credence to what I'm saying so that's basically the New Testament canon for you you need to remember the doctrine of preservation that God preserves his word secondly you need to remember that God testifies to his own word so that's very important very important and these two doctrines you can find in the Westminster Confession so there we are um, I don't think there's anything else to um, to pontificate um, it was tough at uh, Hyde Park because they were very difficult to debate Muslim apologists don't want to really debate I, I put this on the uh, I just turn this off and uh, we can put it on